that mindset of you have to believe you can do it. And for me, a long t- like for a lot, very long time, I was on the national team, but I didn't believe that I could go, you know, to the Olympics or to go how far or to achieve whatever I wanted to achieve. And so I think that mindset and that change of mindset that I had to the process of going through that change of mindset to believe in yourself and to be, you know, have uh, the courage to, to dream. This is Andrian and this is Ray. Welcome to the Talk Lab podcast. Every two weeks, we'll invite a new guest and in every session, we'll dig into the life, relationships and perspectives. One question at a time. Let's Talk Lab! Welcome to the Talk Lab podcast. This is Andrian. And this is Ray. And this week, we have invited Angel Wong, which is actually very special and because she actually went to Olympics. But this time, we're not just talking about she the road to Olympics, but also about herself. And for the second episode, we're just going to wing it, as, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'll let Ray talk about how we actually found Angel, and obviously not found her on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I always appreciate Andrian for giving this kick-ass openings. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think from... Um, yeah, maybe I give a, a brief introduction mm. about how we managed to get uh, uh, Angel on the podcast, and how we are actually very, very lucky to have someone Aww. that have represented Hong Kong in the Olympics and why this is significant because uh, I think in the recent Olympics you see like well all this uh, euphoric uh, sense of belonging of athletes Mm -hmm. yeah so I think it's a really really a great uh, pleasure Mm -hmm. to to, to have you on this Talk Lab podcast so going back to going back to like you know how we actually get connected to Angel right so how how you know, someone in tech, someone in property, property leasing have managed to, you know, get in touch <laughs> with someone, mm. you know, that have been to the Olympics. And by the way, congratulations on getting the bronze medal in the World Championships. It's really, really amazing. Yeah, so back to where and how we actually met Angel. So I was, um, I used to work in Microsoft, so that's where we connected, right? right. There was like an yeah. event where Angel was one of the guest speakers mm-hmm. to share and inspire young kids. So I think it's yes. all like from six years old all the way up to... 13, 14, yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like below uh, secondary and like primary school. And then when I was like listening to listening to sharing, first of all, I was like, wow, who is this Louis son from Microsoft? Aww. Who's that? <laughs> yeah, so I was like, wow, this, this, she looks really, really pretty. I was like, okay. I, then after I was like, oh, she's like an Olymp- uh, Olympian, mm. an athlete. And I was like, wow, I really want to be an athlete, but just so now I'm doing nine, nine to six job and everything. So I really was very interested to hear, you know, what you have to say. And, and the right. sharing was really, really well, really inspiring. So after that, I was like, okay, I have to get a selfie of her. And I said, hey, why not ask her to come on the podcast? So that was yeah, like a, that's how we met at that that's how event. We met. So yeah. that was six months ago. And fast mm-hmm. forward, I think you went through all the competitions. Yes. I was like busy with work, but I'm glad we found time. And here we are mm-hmm. today. So I think uh, with that out of the way, why don't um, you briefly introduce about yourself, your life, your journey to become a, you know, a, a, a full-time athlete and all. And then from there, we can see which are the interesting bits and pieces where we can deep dive on. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so I'm really happy to be on this podcast talking to you guys um so yeah i am a full-time athlete and um what a full-time athlete means is that it's basically our work but i don't see it that way but it is um and so i've been a full-time athlete for over 10 years and when i started gymnastics which is a sport that i do um it was way back when i grew up in australia and i think i was about five years old Really young, and it wasn't just gymnastics, it was, you know, a ton of other sports. You know, Australia is very, uh, very active, and like the, the whole sports culture is, you know, yeah, too, right? yeah, very, you know, I did swimming, I tried tennis, basketball, you know, obviously was not tall enough for either of those <laughs> sports. <laughs> um, but I also found gymnastics at that time, and I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of, like, if any of you have been inside a gymnasium, with the foam pits and like the trampolines and the mats, you know, it's like a playground. So I think that's how I, you know, started and developed my passion for the sport. And fast forward to, you know, many, many years later, um, I gradually, you know, improved and progressed and we moved back to Hong Kong. And then, um, yeah, I went in, I got into the Hong Kong team and I've been representing Hong Kong for over, Close to 20 years, I would say. It's a very long time. You don't, you look, get you don't look that old, yeah. But 
Thank you. <laughs> you make it very awkward, right? Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. I'm I'm always awkward, yeah. But back back to the story. Yeah, representing yeah. 20 years yeah. in Hong Kong. Yeah. So so I've been a national team member, and I've been representing Hong Kong, and I've been very lucky to be able to do what I do because it's something that I love. So like I said, I don't see it as my occupation necessarily. Yeah. It's very because I remember when I went into like a gymnasium mm. when I was like. Teenager, when I was in secondary school, nice. I really, <laughs> really struggle. Like really, yeah. But but it was a fun experience, right? Like beyond the struggle, was it fun? Not really, or else I would have enjoyed it more. Okay, I, f- I feel okay. like an idiot and in, in the gy- gymnasium. I I always had the impression like mm-hmm. uh, every time you go to the gym, it's like uh, everybody knows what they're doing, because right. like in the in the gym. Uh, gym setting everybody yeah. is like super flexible they're oh, like doing so yeah, high jobs yeah. like you're, you're kind of a little yeah. bit intimidated exactly right? yeah. So, yeah. I, so i always admired people um that are doing that mm-hmm. and they have trained and toned their bodies to something so eloquent and they make it so easy and i always mm. like put myself in them and then when i try like oh okay i'm not flexible enough etc yeah so i think uh what you shared i think there's one point that I really wanted to, to deep dive on yeah. because uh, you mentioned why you got into gymnastics is right. because you, you, you touched it and then you sort of like see the people that are involved mm. whether it's like oh I want to be pretty like that yeah. and then like it's just a, but it was the first sport that you tried right when you were five years old uh, was it I the think first it sport? was amongst other sports as well like I said like all the tennis yeah. you, know, okay, okay. you know Australians really big on swimming and tennis and all that stuff yeah yeah so yeah, that that was that, that was quite interesting, yeah. Because like for me, um, like I always wanted to be an athlete, right? Mm. I always tell people. So even on my social media, yeah, profile, you've been telling me since we met. This <laughs> it's like multiple times. So if you can't be one, you mm-hmm. get someone on and share the story, and then right. you see, oh, what are some interesting mm-hmm. takeaways? So I'm actually very excited to to see and and deep dive on on different aspects. Uh, of yeah. It. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's how you got into mm-hmm. gymnastics yeah. and then you represented Hong Kong and then had a very illustrious kind of uh, um, career right. in, in this sport, right? Yeah, I would say but so. I'm yeah. sure like, um, yeah, so now we've got that out of the way. How, how mm-hmm. did you actually start? Like, um, was that like, is that, can you, can you go through like the nitty gritty kind of uh, details? Like, mm-hmm. you're, yeah, we all know that you're good and everything and then that's how you sort of climb right. up the ranks. And everything. But yeah. what's in between? Is that like a formal application process how do you deal mm-hmm. with the coaches right family yeah, yeah. that's they, a, that's yeah. that's like that i could talk for a day <laughs> about <laughs> that but i think yeah it's true like i uh what people see um is like you know when the athlete gets the medal or standing on the podium or when we're in our really beautiful leotards and you know doing the performance and um that is all like the result of you know, there's no secret recipe to it. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of hours in the week. I said I was a full-time athlete. I am a full-time athlete. And um, that requires at least 25 hours of training weekly. Um, and, you know, usually goes beyond that. But that is like the minimum. That's of, the base, right? Yeah, the that's foundation. the base, yeah. So how many hours... Like a day, like day seven, yeah. seven hours a day, something like uh, that? Three, hour, three, four, three to four hours. Uh, right? So we have, okay, so for different sports, I guess they kind of, you know, do different schedules. Mm-hmm. For us, because we have a lot of um, teenagers in the sport, right? So they need to go to school. So we usually start at four and then we train all the way until 8.30. So it's four and a half hours. But there are no like actual breaks. You get a water break, but, you know, but we're kind of used to it. I know it sounds like a very long time. So we usually do like uh, maybe six days of four and a half hours, like five to six days. And then we also have days uh, where we do fitness in like a fitness gym. Yeah, not the gym gym, but fitness gym. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and then so like I said, like it's a lot of, um, you know, hard work. And for me, I think, what makes gymnastics so you know appealing for me why i enjoy it is the challenge actually you know um it's like you said andy (laughs) i'm just going to call you andy because it's so much easier um you said you struggled when you when you went into the gym first time 
And um, yes, it is a difficult sport, you know, I'm not going to lie. It's very complex and you need to have the flexibility, but you also need to have the power. So it's kind of like pulling you on both sides. You have to get that balance. Um, but I do enjoy like from, you know, not knowing something and then going through the process mm. and then to the point of where you, you know, I couldn't do a handstand before, but then the end result is like, I could do a handstand now. You know, it's very satisfying, <laughs> um, you know, experience and a process as well. And I do love the creativity that you get with the sport. I am easily bored. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot take like, I know like training is a lot of repetition. It's true. Um, but I, I love the process of where you can, you know, add in your own dance and choreography because artistic gymnastics on the women's side for beam and for floor, you can yeah. do, you know, you can choose your music and you can dance to it and you can have more of that expressive, you know, uniqueness about mm -hmm. your performance, which I really love. Um, and then the skills that you choose, we do have a structure to it, but you can choose within that structure. Mm -hmm. Like unlike a lot of other sports where it's just freestyle is freestyle. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so you can't do another stroke and call it freestyle. So... That's what I love about the sport. And um, as difficult as it may be, um, I think that the part of, you know, being creative and, you know, to kind of um, push through um, every challenge and to, to, you know, be at the top of that hill, at that mountain after a very long process, that's what keeps me going. Yeah. I think I, I really picked out on something that really struck it doesn't just apply to being a sportsman or full-time athlete. Like mm. the whole mindset was very humbling. Like you were sharing like, okay, how you always want to get better and better. And if you yes. see something challenging, <laughs> you, you, you seem mm. like, at least I'm like, when I'm listening, what you're hearing, uh, what, what you're saying, I'm like, wow, you actually will actually break things down to see, oh, how do you get that done better? Because yeah, sports true. at the end of the day yeah. or anything in life mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you see a challenge. Yeah. Then you break it down to different aspects and then you see how you can, improve on the different aspects yeah so true and yeah. once then then it becomes bite-sized pieces right mm -hmm. and then okay you don't look at the problem like oh this is big problem and you don't <laughs> yeah. start on because yeah. we were talking over breakfast that okay people don't start something because of the thought of failure mm -hmm. and a sport like you go in being a full-time athlete it's very scary right like yeah i nobody knows if you're gonna be part of the olympics yeah you're five true. years old right yeah. you come go in a sport yeah. and then you sort of pragmatically go mm -hmm. and I think it all like I picked out like really your mindset behind like okay you see something tough and you really really want to put yourself put your heart and effort into it yeah but what I found it very humbling I think a lot of people can do that but what athletes have in common is like they just keep nailing on the go so I, it's quite interesting mm -hmm. when you say like yeah there's someone that doesn't like to do um boring and repetitive stuff but that's, <laughs> that's the requirement for yeah. a lot of uh, successful people, I would mm -hmm. say. Not even just the athletes, right? Yeah. You have to put in the hard work and, and right. go there. Yeah. But I, I can understand and see and resonate how you sort of make it and why you chose gymnastics. It's the creativity yes. aspect, which I don't have. A Andrea and <laughs> Andy might have, yeah. Um, so I think from, from that, like we understand that. And I think we, I, I, I thought this whole thought process that you were sharing was very meaningful. But mm -hmm. throughout that whole journey, right, right what was like the toughest part because you mentioned like okay doing something repetitively takes you know someone really disciplined and all mm -hmm. is the family how do you deal with that the friends what was the the toughest i know it's hard to mm. pinpoint something but you can name a few but what was some of the toughest part you know you being an athlete mm -hmm. the trade-offs you know your social yeah. life yeah what right, were some things yeah. that you found like it was yeah re really tough yeah yeah i think well first of all you know like i said we we do train a lot yeah. and that takes up a lot of time <laughs> and so throughout my um you know high school years and um college you know i had to sacrifice a lot of you know the hanging out times with friends and the social life yeah right? and you know it's diff it is difficult to balance between you know i never gave up on like um my studies so yeah. i i you know, I just basically had to balance, you know, my time between training and um, studying school stuff. And so that was difficult. You know, it would be late nights and like not getting your homework done yeah. or like getting it done like at the very, very last minute. Like <laughs> I'm always that deadline fighter, <laughs> I tell you. Um, yeah, so that was difficult. And sometimes I do feel like, you know, I would, I would kind of like, 
tell myself like angel why are you putting yourself in like such a difficult situation yeah. <laughs> it's like you're so tired yeah. and you have to get through this but you know um i think all that um really paid off for me at the end like when i look back on it but you know beyond the sacrifices um that i had with time and you know spending time with friends and family i think the difficult moments would be um i think one of it would be my mindset how you know a lot of people they introduce me as an olympian and you know it's it's an oh, yeah. honor and it's, <laughs> it's like, like some i think it's quite sad but also happy that okay you are judged based on your results yeah right, as an athlete yeah. and that's actually it is good yeah but it's also really sad if you don't have anything and that's very common yes. there's only so yeah. many champions in the world exactly right? like no not everyone can be a champion right but i think you know like kind of um kind of you know kind of expanding from what you just said is that like um that mindset of you have to believe you can do it and for me a long t- like for a lot very long time i was on the national team but i didn't believe that i could go you know to the olympics or to go how far or to achieve whatever i wanted to achieve and so i think that mindset and that change of mindset that i had to the process of going through that change of mindset to believe in yourself and to be you know have the courage to to dream yeah. and to you know like i used to be my own biggest um limit i would say like because i didn't believe i could do it yeah. and i think that's very important to like now when i share my story i would you know i think this is one of the main points that i would get want to get across is to 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 be strong and to be able to believe in um yeah. what you can achieve and you know and then to work towards that you know that you know st- st- looking straight ahead and to to continue no matter what obstacles or what setbacks you face and so for me that was a very difficult process yep. um but i think it wasn't just my own um you know development mm. through the the process it was like friends and family and coaches believing in me and giving me the opportunity so i was very lucky to have the team around yeah, me yeah. um pushing me towards that goal and i think the other one would definitely for an athlete be injuries mm. yeah cuz for me yeah. i had a very severe injury way back in 2015 so give some context mm-hmm. 20, 2015 was that like the peak of your uh, obviously now it's the peak yeah yeah still we're, we're world number 3 we're in the yeah. peak <laughs> yeah but 2015 <laughs> give some context cuz if i remember some numbers like 2008 That was when you represented Hong Kong in gymnastics, right? 2008. Or 12. 2008 or 12, I 2012. well, I represented Hong Kong, but 2012 was when I went to the London Olympics, yeah. All right. All right. So that was like sort of like the the defining moment as an yes. athlete, right? Everybody <laughs> was like wow in the Olympics, yeah. Mm-hmm. So 2015 was more mm-hmm. like you were already a well established uh yes. gymnast because yes. you already went through the Olympics and people right. that have already went through the Olympics, you're like, wow, I'm an established athlete. <laughs> Right, sort of, sort of, sort of, right, and then so that must mm-hmm. be should be like obviously now you're still at peak, which is very, very amazing. How I, I think I guess it's yeah. a different peak, but we can you know yeah, dive, dive into, into that a little okay. bit later. But yeah, it's true. Um, you know, I think um, in 2012, I had overcome you know like I said the mindset yeah. issue yeah. of you know believing in yourself yeah. and you know and being brave enough to just go for the dream and if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out right but i tried like no regrets i think a lot of the times we need to take that first step and then when we have that big goal like for me the dream was olympics yeah. and then i think you mentioned ray that to break it down into like for me it was like baby steps like we're making progress yeah. you know a little bit every day and then it doesn't seem as daunting as you know whoa it's so far away it's so so high up um and you know it worked out for me and then in 2015 i had a a, a very severe knee injury okay. so i think people have heard about the acl yep. you know tearing the <laughs> acl ligament for me there are four <laughs> ligaments in the knee and i tore all of them mm. uh it was a freak accident i would say like it's it's very uncommon how you know, d- i was how, just how very unlucky i slipped off the bar So in gymnastics we have 
a couple of yep. events. We have the vault, we have the uneven bars, the beam, and then the floor. Mm -hmm. So I was doing uneven bars. And bars has always been my weakest event. <laughs> so I guess I am less confident on that event. But it was also because of... Um, I was in Japan. And I was, I was kind of getting used to the, the equipment yeah. that was very different from what I had at home here. So I think that kind of contributed to it as well. But, you know, I, I think it's important to go back and kind of... You know, I do assess... This is like go go back and assess and see like oh like what led to that injury but uh, you know I try not to overthink it and you know what's happened has happened but um, yeah so I fell I slipped I fell at a very weird angle and then mm -hmm. I tore the ligaments in my knee ouch. and then I yeah ouch <laughs> and then I came back and then I you know I did MRIs and like. Um, I had to go through two in, uh, surgeries to kind of repair or fix everything. And it was a very long, long rehab process to come back to where I am now. And I guess I am, I wouldn't say I'm in my peak now, but it's like a different peak yeah, for yeah. me. I get what you yeah. mean, right? Like, um, like when you're young, right? Like junior mm. athletes. You, you felt like you can do everything, right? Yeah. Like physically constraints, yeah. but as like in terms of the mindset of a real athlete, you, you get better on that sense. So it's like mm -hmm. a trade-off. It's is true. It, my mind is get, stronger, yeah. but my, <laughs> my physical self is a little like and that, not as... That's what makes you know. this sport so dynamic or anything in life, right? There's a time and place for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're young, you, you, you're really good at some aspect, mm -hmm. but you might not have the experience on yeah, how to control that you so know, inner emotion mm -hmm. and once you've you know collect a lot of different global stage events olympics being yeah. one of the bigger ones world championships another yeah. one and then you sort of like oh i've went through this this is how i should go through what's the mental model you go mm -hmm. and then what's the inner voice mantra to tell yourself oh yeah, yeah. That's it. and then so you're really good at that <laughs> so so in terms of the consistency mm -hmm. you're gonna be much better where when you're young you're like oh you can do this but you don't always do that all the time Something yeah, it's like that. true. Yeah. yeah, and I think you know, as athletes, you know, we spend a lot of time training, but we are just people. And you know, when you grow up, you go through. You know, there's a there's a you know there's a big learning curve. Um, you know, throughout going through your sport career, but also you know, like just growing up in general. Yep. Like you go through life. You know, you do high school and then uni. And then, you know, your personal life, relationships and, you know, friends and things that happen, you know, uh, to, to your family and, you know, and, and all of that kind of affects yeah. or, you know, kind of, um, yeah, it kind of, um, they all affect who, who you become and how you approach life yeah. now that, you know, I am a bit older. And Don't worry, we all can't tell. Yeah. And our <laughs> audience can't tell unless <laughs> Even you can't tell if she's still young. Yeah, yes, we, I am still young. I'm still young. Yeah, we yeah. all still young. This <laughs> okay, podcast right. is for young adults. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, like just by hearing your <laughs> voice. Like, so if you guys not tuned on YouTube, do check it out. Mm -hmm. You can see Angel's uh, presence, Aww. pretty vibes, and yeah, two random dudes. Yeah, <laughs> and we we have to thank uh, Eugene for the high quality setup this time. Yeah, thank we you. We need to shout out to you Camp Production. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I think I just have one, uh, actually two questions, but mm -hmm. we, we start with one and then I'll pass it to Andrew to, to ask. Mm -hmm. But since you've covered a lot about, you know, the recovery process, right. so, so a lot of the tough times and how you go through it, and I'll break it down to two things, right? One is like your mindset, mm. like that inner voice and how you actually fight that to say mm -hmm. you can do it. Yeah. And it's actually not just you. In some ways, yeah, the only person that can change um, or... or make that first step is actually you, right? Having that courage. But yeah. it's not just you that oh, was no. part of yeah. it. Like what you said, yeah. like it's actually the environment, the people around you that gave you the support and trust and belief. Yes. Like yes. you, I picked out like the coaches really believed mm -hmm. in you and gave you a lot of opportunities. Yeah. So with that keep coming on and mm -hmm. then you do well, that sort of gives you some confidence mm. to show, oh, okay, failure is actually, yeah, it's getting further, further away. Of course it will come, right? Yeah. And then you, that's how you beat your mm -hmm. inner voice to, to fight for it. And then the other one is really more on, yeah, I think for, for athletes, it's injuries and how to go through right. the rehab recovery. So that's like, when, especially when you hit a high point in your life. And oh, in some yeah. cases, and some cases like very sad and un unfortunate, it's like 
when you're training towards something big and then you get injured before mm-hmm. that, that's even even more demoralizing. And I think that's why a lot of people get depressed. A lot of athletes get depressed because they're like they've been training yeah. so hard day in day out. They really got a slot in somewhere and then they get injured before that. Yeah, that's one of the worst feelings I can imagine because you put that is so much hours, mm-hmm. effort, and your soul into mm-hmm. that, and then suddenly that's gone. But now I think. That's always like something to be grateful about. I think for, for your case, Angel, it's like, okay, you went through sort of that, that peak, right? And now mm-hmm. you're at a different peak. And then yeah. another, you know, uh, challenge came up to you. Right. Right. And then yeah. you had that injury. And that's, yeah. I, I would say, like, probably the biggest injury that you have. Oh, I'm yeah. sure you had previous injury mm-hmm. because with that amount of training, you are bound to get injured. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but this is the one that, well, you tore your whole ligament and stuff. So, yes. <laughs> what, how did you, yeah, handle that? That kind of mm-hmm. stress, like, okay, are you able to... I- I'm sure when that happened, you'd be like, okay, is this like, uh, this injury, injury is really, really bad. How long does it take before I can get back? How will it affect my career down mm-hmm. the road? And then now looking back, hey, yeah. you had another peak now, right? But right. in that moment and actually going through that process, how do you, how do you like internalize it and you know, tell yourself? Because mm. it's a different, uh, different kind of mindset. It's like... Not in a voice, or you can do it, you do it. This is like, oh, I'm already pretty broken now. Yeah. How do I pick myself back? Yeah, it's true. Um, so when I had that injury, it was very painful, obviously. Yeah. But, you know, it was almost very, uh, like in the movies, like I had like a ton of like images, like run through my head of what could have been or like, yeah. you know. And for me, it wasn't right before like a major Olympics or something, but I was working towards the Rio Olympics. Like I wanted that. That like I I got injured in 2015, late mm. 2015, and you know you know the Olympics is next year, and you're you you have that goal right in front of you. Um, and so for me, I felt like I was in a very good physical state. Um, I had my skills ready, and to have that injury at that time, it was. Yeah, it was, you know, it was a very, very difficult time for me. Uh, more so emotionally. Like, yes, the pain, but more so emotionally. And I think there was a time, uh, you know, when I was waiting for my scans and like, you know, seeing yeah. doctors and kind of discussing yeah. on, on how I would approach the surgeries and all that. I was a bit depressed. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I think... Um, uh, you know, on the media or like social platforms, you see like athletes are always like they're on the podium and they're very strong. But you know, that's one side of things, and I think um, it's you know, a lot of times we go through a lot of you know very low points in our life, and not that we have to share it, but I think it's also okay. Like it's it's okay to not be okay, right? Yeah. And and for me, I was all in my emotions at the time. And I think it's fine. Like, it's not good to kind of keep them, you know, bottled or like yeah. stuffed. Um, and I think for me, um, that process of going through the surgeries, that low point, really helped me to understand myself a lot more mm-hmm. and to be open to my feelings and the vulnerability. Like, I never used to feel comfortable, like, really telling my, you know, in uh, weaknesses and thoughts mm. and you know very yeah. vulnerable side of me because i was this very strong athlete on the outside but i think you know through that i learned that i needed to open up and you do feel better like if you tell someone you tell a friend and i think um going through the emotions and like sharing them to the people around me really helped me to push through the very very dark times um to process those emo- emotions emotions And also, I think, you know, like I said, I had a great team of people around me. And, um, you know, after the surgeries, you know, everything went well, um, but it was still a very long process. And I basically, I feel like I kicked into that athlete mindset again, like even in my rehab, was to set your goals. Like Mm. basically, that was it. You know, today I'm in a wheelchair. Tomorrow, you know, um, you know, in the w- weeks ahead, we had like this whole plan mm-hmm. at, uh, ahead of us. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'd be standing in a week's time. I'd be taking my first step in three weeks, something like yeah. that. Like, yeah. and so like little, the little, yeah, yeah, and yeah. the little gains that you, you reach each day really helps you to, 
to kind of give you that motivation and encourage you to 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 see that okay they're mine are gains but they are gains nonetheless and so that really helped me um to get through that process yeah yeah i think um actually looking at the time we have to wrap up soon but i think i have just one really quick comment and thank you for letting me free write the whole episode basically <laughs> but then i think being a listener all throughout the whole way is i think being an athlete is all about the perseverance about going through i think there are a lot of times when you thought of giving up right right yeah you, definitely <laughs> but you overcame all of those and you you reached a new peak mm. when you got injured or when you like didn't go to rio those are probably haunting moments for you throughout yes. your career of sorts mm-hmm. but then you still went through it and i think what i really wanted to say is i think being an athlete is not it's not just some mindset it's basically like burned into your personality now right it's i not, think it does yeah, yeah it's, it's interwoven just, into who i am yeah, as well it's, yeah. it's not just a title but i think sometimes even though it's a really side topic is that i think that being an athlete shouldn't be a label it shouldn't be a label yeah. for an angel yeah. yeah but it's just it could be a label for everyone because i think there's an athlete in every one of us because yeah, everyone that is so in true. life has to persevere has mm-hmm. go through something but then being an athlete just exaggerates at the amount that is required. Yeah. I think I think I admire athletes and I admire everyone who went through something and actually overcame it. I think that's that process makes you learn a lot mm-hmm. in everyone and definitely I think in Angel's career or in life or I don't know what's next <laughs> or or anything for everyone. But I think that's that's basically burned into your personality that makes you for next challenge, you know you can go through with it because you went mm-hmm. through everything yes. before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think that brings me back to, I think that with that time when I did that um, sharing at yep. Microsoft, um, I did put up that quote, yeah. <laughs> which it's I can't remember quote. word for word. But I can remember, <laughs> but you go for it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, yeah, it was like, I, can't, I wrote that, yeah. but I don't exactly remember. But it, it's along the lines of, you know, um, you know, when go- moving forward seems too difficult at times because we do, you know, every day or like for the average person, we go through different, yeah. you know, struggles and, you know, you feel like you can't, you can't, you know, go through the day or that period. Um, and if that is too difficult, sometimes I do like to, you know, kind of turn my head, look back and you see how you far you've come. I think it was something along yep. that. Yes, yes. <laughs> And yeah, because you, you've seen the struggles in the past and you know you've went kind of it. went through yeah. it, overcome them. And that gives you, you know, the confidence to know that you can go mm. through whatever you're going through yeah. now. Mm. Yeah. Actually, yeah, there's an there's a interesting story that um, is quite personal to me mm-hmm. that actually my manager, like I was doing an evaluation. So I was doing a sales role, right? right. Like, te- like in my- Microsoft back then. Yeah. And I was having a lot of struggle on how to do innovation business, innovation kind of deals in okay. government okay. In, in Hong Kong because they are quite traditional. Mm-hmm. So I was really struggling a lot. I'm not super technical. Yeah. I was struggling to have the conversations, reach out to the right stakeholders. And I was like, okay, this is not right for me. Mm-hmm. Like I want to do another role, et cetera, right? And then she always bring up to the point, oh, do you remember the athlete, that Aww. angel? Yeah, and then she was saying like, okay, now you're at the stage that, okay, you feel like you, you don't know what's the answer. Mm-hmm. But in order to give you some confidence, you always should think, like what she said, she always like refers to your quote. And she was saying like, oh, just remember to look in hindsight yeah. where you've come and how much you've achieved. Mm-hmm. No matter how far, you keep looking further and further back if you don't have any recent kind of, yeah. uh, of uh, you know, out, uh, achievements, right? right? Because there's always going to be something yeah. that you can anchor yourself and feel that, oh my God, yeah, me coming to Hong Kong, mm. adapting to local culture, mm-hmm. or let's say not so far, far back, it's like, okay, uh, me joining Microsoft, it's right. like a tough company to go in, right? Yeah. Like, oh, I, I did it. Yeah, so she said, always anchor to something just to show that, you know, you have some sort of confidence mm-hmm. in that so that you are recharged and you can take on the next challenge and yeah. have that athlete mm-hmm. mindset. And I think Andrin, Andrin really shared something very profound, mm-hmm. like, okay, 
athlete is really like not a label. It's like a personality, some sort. And that's why like I completely resonate that. Mm. Like my previous, previous managers were saying like athletes, why athletes makes great salespeople mm. is because they are very driven. So it's like a personality trait. Yeah. No matter how tough the situation, how much you cannot hit the quota, you'll find a way mm. to hit right. it. And that's why people love uh, to see athletes in the resume. Mm. And now we Do that, they? Yeah. And that <laughs> leads well. to the, the, the next <laughs> episode where, you know, you know, we'll cover more, you know, from from Angel's point of view on, you know, not just the mindset of her being an Olympian in the journey. Yeah. We covered all that, but how and what it, it's like, you know, in real life, you know, mm-hmm. behind the scenes, what's next, the career, what's the right. opportunity. So all that and more in the second episode. Yeah. All right, then. Thank you. Uh, for tuning in and thank you Angel for the first episode so jump right into the second episode and uh, if you like us just listen us on Spotify uh, comment and like on YouTube and also DM us if you have any questions yeah and just one quick note to you know I wouldn't say sponsor but a good friend uh, Eugene so if you're looking you like the production value you're not not listening to us on YouTube (laughs) but you're loving the audio it's because it's all powered by you can so do check them out and uh, yeah, we're, we're actually in his studio. Yeah, so thank you very much, Eugene and the team for letting us use the space. See you. Bye. Bye.